I'm Laura Harmon and I'm the Trauma Medical Director and Chair of the Department of Surgery. I came to Boulder Community Health really um, as an accident, but now I think the universe brought me here. One of the processes that we're actually working on here at Boulder Community Health is integrating trauma-informed care into our everyday practice. So when we have patients that come in that are in a vulnerable state, it doesn't help if five people in the room are shouting at them saying, what's your weight? What's your height? Do you take any medications? Do you have any allergies? Don't move your arm. What you see is um, patients automatically are in this heightened state of chaos. Um, they're reactive um, and they don't feel safe. I've heard lots of people say, well, they're dying, we just have to do this. And um, people may be dying, but it's our job to not cause more trauma while we're trying to treat their trauma. If we can slow down, if we can stop shouting, if we can decrease the amount of sensory overload coming at them, uh, we can make it a more peaceful environment and hopefully not induce more trauma. One of the things that we have done um, to really be mindful about the care of our providers is um, we've started hosting debrief sessions after um, we have particularly difficult cases. One of the things that really surprised me when we were doing these debriefs is um, the nurses were like, I mean, I can't cry. Like, I, I have to hide hide this emotion. And um, I cry all the time. <laughs> and, um, and I cry with families because it's hard. It, this is, it hurts. Being vulnerable uh, with our feelings and acknowledging our feelings and responding to our feelings and not trying to fit into what we think we should be doing um, has created vulnerability amongst the staff um, and I hope has begun to reduce the secondary trauma of taking care of patients and, and being part of that trauma. You know, one of the programs that I'm really excited about um, is the Trauma Survivors Network. And so this year we just finished up our um, first inaugural trauma symposium and our keynote speaker for that uh, conference was actually one of our trauma survivors. And so he's a patient of mine that um, was in a car accident and had his legs amputated. And I took care of him about two years ago. And over the last two years, we've maintained a relationship. And one of the things he told me was that he wanted to come back and connect with the hospital staff and with the people who um, really saved his life. This person's going to be our first trauma survivor mentor. He is going to start working with our spiritual care team and mentoring new trauma patients as they come in um, and so our goal is to really create an environment where there are people who have been where you've been, been through what you have been through that can guide you to the next space. You know it's funny we were just talking about the fact that our entire conversation has been about interactions and our connections with people and you're interviewing a surgeon and we haven't talked about surgery at all. And so I think that that is emblematic of where we're at in the practice of medicine is that yes, you need to be able to technically do the surgical part of your job. Yes, you need to be a good clinician, but maybe more important is the human connection with your patients 